right? And, and when we go back to Ramayana, just yesterday, uh, there was this auspicious occasion of um, uh, the Shehra, right? So uh, let us speak a few things from the holy, holy uh, epic uh, Ramayana, right? And learn what did actually Ravana do that led to his downfall. But before that, children, I'd like to write your age be uh, before your name. So for example, I can see uh, Mahi here. So if you are 12, you write 12 Mahi. So quickly, if you can do that, that will be nice. And uh, then we will say recite the prayers. I request all of you to recite uh, the prayers, which we invoke the blessings of our Guru Parampara, our spiritual master, and also our uh, deities, Shishradha uh, Shyam Sundara and Shishi Gandharvika Girdhari, Sriman Mahaprabhu. Okay, so if you have done that, we'll just start with our prayers. We'll chant Om three times. Let's take a deep breath in. Oh. Oh. Om Ajnana Timarandhasya Gyanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Nale Tamyenam Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Manubhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Pandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakha Vitam E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Krishbhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Kanchakal Pataru Kabascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shishigaur Nithai Ki Jai All the assembled devotees Ki Jai Nithai Gaur Primanande Hari Hari Bo All right children thank you once again for joining this session for teenagers where we are going to discuss some life lessons from Ramayana and actually, today we're going to learn from a demon's dealing, and that is uh, Ravana. Yes. So, children, all of us uh, know that Ramana, uh, Ravana is a demon, right? But there are some people who say that, oh, Ravana was so learned, and um, Ravana is a person who knew so many things. Yes, he had 10 heads, and because he had so much of knowledge, but how much brains? It says no brain and this particular presentation will tell us how exactly even with 10 heads, this personality Ravana had no brain.
right? So people say that Ravana it was a pundit, he was a Brahmana, he knew so many shlokas and he did so much of tapasya and uh, Lord Brahma had also blessed him and his Ishtadev means the one whom he used to pray to was Shivji and uh, you know how can he be a demon and how can he do something which is wrong? So someone actually I was seeing somewhere that they've written a Ravan Samhita also which is wrong and where it is it was explained that Ravana treated all the ladies around him as his mother or uh, daughter, right? That is why we call uh, all, even small um, girls, you know, we call, or any other lady, we call Matajis, right? And uh, the, the men or the gentlemen, we call them Prabhujis. Why? Because that is a word of the Vedas and the scriptures say that one must consider anyone else other than his own wife as the uh, as his mother so that is what we call matajis but ravana was nowhere close to that thought process in fact he was a very very uh, lusty person he was a person who could not control his senses who could not control his thought process who could not control that um, you know who could not differentiate between what was right and what was wrong there are so many incidences but before going to that part let me just quickly tell you what all qualities ravana possessed right so yes so ravana was a learned brahmana ravana was a wonderful musician children he played the veena so well he used to play that uh, instrument called veena that even the gandharvas from the heavens would come and listen to his veenas he would play it so well and he was a great devotee of lord shiva so how can devotees be wrong you know that's what people argue and he was also an ayurveda expert so he was an he was a doctor in the field of ayurveda can you imagine how much wisdom he had but where did he go wrong so let us see so now it's not that children um uh, you know, nobody came to give advice. In terms of, uh, you know, Kamsa, he got that Akashpani. He got that uh, celestial sound saying, oh fool, uh, Kamsa, you are giving shelter to your sister Devaki, whose eighth son is going to kill you. So, you know, uh, um, Kamsa knew about it, but Ravana had no um, Akashpani like that. But he had so many other wise men who came to him and from time to time, time and again, he was given an advice that Ravana, what you're doing, what you're going to do, you're going to, um, you're declaring a war against Rama. He's the supreme personality of Godhead and that is wrong. Give back Sita. So let us see children who all came to give uh, advice to uh, Ravana. But before that, I would like to say about uh, the past life of Ravana. So, now, we, to cut a long story short, I'm going to tell you that they were the four sons of Lord Brahma, right? And they were created by Lord Brahma to increase the population of this world. But these uh, Manasaputras, because they were, you know, they were born just when Lord Brahma thought about them, they were born. They were four, they were four in number. Sanaka, Sanatana, Sanandan, and and um, one more and sa sana, uh, sorry Sanaka, Sanatan, Sanandan and Sanantan, Sanantana so sorry for that confusion so similar names so these were four Kumaras and why they were called Kumaras because they wanted always to be, be at the age of five years old you see children five-year-old children are so so innocent isn't it and and they did not want to grow up because they knew that when they would grow up, you know, Maya would attack them. And that means that all bad, uh, you know, they would um, come across bad things in the world, in the material world too. So Lord Brahma, he blessed all four of them to remain as small Kumara, small little children, but they were actually very advanced in age. So they went once to Vaikuntaloka to have a darshan of Lord Vishnu. But there... They were stopped by the doorkeepers of Lord Vishnu, who were Jay and Vijay. 
they thought that these are small children and how can they disturb lord vishnu because lord vishnu is relaxing right now isn't it so they did not allow them they put a long argument but these some you know four kumaras were realized souls and they cursed these um, jay and vijay that you will have to go down on the earth and live on that earth and suffer on that earth and you will have to leave vaikuntha and they started crying jay vijay started crying and then the lord vishnu came in and uh, he's uh, they requested lord vishnu please take up this curse by the four kumaras so lord vishnu said no no i cannot do that i cannot take up the curse given by these four kumaras but i can always do give you one solution so they said yes my lord please we are ready to accept whatever solution is you give us so lord vishnu he said either you take three birds as demons on the earth become my enemy for three birds and come back to where kuntan serve me or you take seven birds as my devotee on the earth spread my names and glories and you come back so what do you think children they would have said just a critical thinking so these uh, jay and vijay the gatekeepers they chose to come back after three births of demoniac life and this in this demoniac life in the first uh, birth jay and vijay in the satya yuga became hiranyaksha and hiranyakashipu then in the treta yuga they become became ravana and kumbhakaran and in the third birth which is treta yuga uh, sorry with uh, yes treta yuga uh, no sorry what did i say uh, yeah and the end of the dwapar yuga they become they became shishupal and dantavakra who wanted to kill lord krishna and balram but they were ultimately killed by them right were killed by lord krishna and balram so this was the past so many people argue again that ravana was a devotee in the form of a demon but no this birth in this birth he was a demon right and he displayed the qualities of a demon which had to be stopped and he had to be annihilated right so the that is why many devotees you know they don't burn this effigy of ravan you know how you have the shera and you have uh, three effigies ravan kumkaran meghnath and they burn the effigies of uh, ravan but we devotees don't do that because we know that he is a he he is he was originally a pure soul who came down to help the lord to perform his leela and for us to know what is right what is wrong right so so children similarly we are also all pure souls we have emanated from the supreme personality of god at krishna we are we are actually eternally very pure but because of our association with bad company association with too many gadgets youtube too much of screen time and a lazy routine we have kind of uh, become very very uh, demoniac in our behavior right so time to think here even if it is a lockdown it's school from home you don't have to actually get up wear your uniform or stuff and at least children make sure you freshen up sit on the table and concentrate with an erect posture and then sit for your studies right so now children let's see who all came to uh, um uh, uh, Han, uh, ravana to give him give him advice first was hanuman ji right hanuman was sent as the first messenger by lord rama and lord Ra he was actually a peace messenger he did not want to put uh, you know lanka on fire but when he was going around in the beautiful gardens of ravana which is which is you know uh, which was um, the entire lanka the city of lanka and the palace was so so beautiful it was constructed by the celestial architect vishwakarma and it was so beautiful that all the demigods also would come and see that palace and the beautiful garden around it so when he came he was really excited and he wanted to have all the fruits so all the soldiers went and told um you know uh, ravana that there's a vanar who is come and who's plucking all the fruits uh, fruits and destroying all your gardens so uh, ravan knew how to agitate a particular um, person or a particular being so he said okay for vanaras their tail is very very important and they hold up their tail high so let's agitate it still so they started you know beating up and they 
you know, started um, uh, putting fire on the tail. So that's how the Lanka, entire Lanka was burnt. And then when ultimately Ravana agreed to meet Hanuman, Hanuman came in and uh, he said to him that, uh, give back Sita to Rama. What you're doing is not correct. First, Hanuman showed his power by burning the entire Lanka or you know, with part of Lanka with his burnt tail. And the fact that he had come in such a big uh, paradise of Ravan, a powerful king alone in, in, uh, in itself said that Hanuman was very, very powerful, right? And he also told Ravana, Ravana, realize your unrighteous act. Lord Ram is very powerful and he can annihilate you, you know, any moment. So Ravana thought for a moment, what should I do? And then he went to his messenger, his chief uh, ministers inside. And he said that, um, okay, let's do one thing. You know, let's kill Hanuman. So the chief uh, uh, ministers of Ra Hanuman, uh, of Ravana, were sensible. And you know what they said? For a messenger, it is not befitting for a king to kill a messenger of, the, of another uh, party. Right, the messenger should not be offered any fight, and we should not attack him. Right, at the most we can shave his hair, or we can, you know, um, you know, blaspheme him. But the messenger should not be killed. But Ra but Ra Ravana did not pay heed to neither the ministers and nor Hanuman, and so of course the Lanka was burnt, and Hanuman went back. This was the first one who gave advice to Ravana. Let's see who is the next one. Right. Next was Vibhishan. Vibhishan, he was the younger brother of Ravan. And after Ravan was killed by Rama, he was the one who took over the kingdom of Ravana. Right. And uh, Vibhishan did not, did never, he never actually agreed to what Ravana said, you know, about Mother Sita. And uh, he was actually a devotee of Lord Ram. And he said, no, no, Ravan, uh, my dear brother Ravana, please do not invite death ne and do not let your, you know, uncontrolled anger it destroy your intelligence. Ravana had uncontrolled anger over Lord Ram. How did he break the Shiv Dhanush? How did he uh, marry Mother Sita? From that time onwards, he was envious of Lord Ram. Imagine, children, how envy can lead to, lead to our downfall. In your lives also, whenever you have this thought of envy or jealousy towards somebody, just remember Ravana, right? And how Ravana's, Ravana's downfall occurred because he was envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We are not envious of Supreme Personality of Godhead. But even if we are envious of, a of, our, of anybody, a close friend or an associate, a neighbor, anybody, our downfall starts on that very particular day, right? So please be aware of this envy, uncontrolled. That leads to uncontrolled anger because your wishes are not being fulfilled, right? Sometimes when your parents say, children, don't do this. Children, please reduce your screen time. And when you don't listen to them, they take away your phone or your iPads or your laptops. And you get angry at them, at them. Right, children? But that anger doesn't take you anywhere. Time to think. Put your thinking caps on and think. But Ravana did not pay any heed to Vibhishan's advice. So Vibhishan went to Ramji's, Rama's army and he leaked all the secrets of Ravana's army to Ram. And Ram was very happy with Vibhishan's service. And then at the end, when Ravana died, he anointed him as the king of Lanka. Okay, let's see which who who are the, uh, you know Mandodri is the next yeah so Mandodri is a very uh, chaste she was a very chaste wife of Ravana she was beautiful she was intelligent and she also you know repeatedly she would advise Ravana that what you have done is wrong you cannot abduct uh, anybody's wife like that and claim your authority. Yes, agreed, you are the king of Lanka. You're the most powerful, but you cannot do this. And Mandodari is known to be loyal to her husband. And she lo loyal. She was loyal to her husband, but also children, she time to time when she thought that her husband was going on a wrong path, she would always advise. So these, she was like a good friend to him. So children, 
these are our good friends in life. Those friends which tell us, hey, listen. Hey, listen, Aryan. Hey, listen, so-and-so. You are doing wrong. Don't do this. Instead of those friends who, you know, applaud you for anything and everything that you do. You know, chamcha giri, we call it, right? Just for you know, pleasing you and not being rude to you. They will not tell you your mistakes. Children, these are not our friends. They are in actual terms, our enemies, right? So be where So Mandodari was such a chase husband and despite her husband's fall, my falls, Mandodari loved him and served him. And Ramayana tells about her glories also. Okay, but Ramayana, Ravana was covered with lust, was covered with pride that I can achieve anything on this earth and in all the three planetary, four planetary systems. So he did not pay attention to Mandodri also, right? Next was Malyavan. Who was Malyavan or Malyaban? Mal, uh, Malyavan was the chief uh, um, minister of the royal court of Ravana's kingdom. And whenever Ravana would be in distress, or whenever Ravana would, uh, you know, want some advice regarding his kingdom, he was the uh, main minister who would actually advise him. And why was he an advisor? Because he was well-versed in scriptures, right? And he would not budge, again, he would not budge from his opinion based on the scriptures strictly, even though probed by other ministers around. So children, you know, uh, take shelter of someone who is, who is a little balanced in the mind, a little, you know, learned, a little experienced like your parents, like, like your teachers, your gurus, right? And, uh, and that is how, even when you make some mistake, doesn't matter. Just go and confide into your parents. Just go and tell them that mother or father, I feel I've done something wrong. How can I rectify it? And what should I do? Right? So Ravana would go to him and he did tell Ravana. Malivan told him, Ravana, beware. It's not correct. You are an intellectual person and you have declared a war against Rama, the supreme personality of Godhead. You must let go of your wrong desires. First and foremost, children, we don't come to know where we go wrong. And when we come to know, when people point it to us, at least that point also you can stop. You know, sometimes we don't know what mistakes we make at that time. You know, but when we suffer, we come to know, oh, what did I do wrong? Then you go back to the incidences that happen. You may realize, you may not realize yourself. Take help of your parents and try to understand. Take help of your good friends and try to understand. So Malivan was like a, that good friend of Ravana who advised him not to declare a war against Rama and to give back Sita. Hmm? Okay, so let's see who was the next person. Marichi, Mari, Maricha, sorry. Maricha, children, was a demon right now he was the demon and he was the son of the demoness tataka and the brother of subahu and uh, he was uh, also you know related to ravana he was his uncle's son so uh, he in fact was sent by ravana to disturb the yakya practice or the prayer or the spiritual practices of you know uh, of the sages right uh, th these these things existed at that time and now also children when you sit to do mala right when you do sit to do your chanting there will be so many thoughts that come in this is these are the maricha thoughts that come into your mind right oh let me let me just you know chant instead of four rounds let me just chant one round watch some youtube channel and then come back okay let me just uh, you know go and play with my friends and then come back and do chanting so in the end we do that but these are the maricha thoughts so beware so maricha was a demon who who uh, you know uh, his his um, his uh, mother tataka and subahu brother were killed by lord ram on the instructions of vishwamitra right but uh, he also wanted to fight against Lord Ram, but somehow he escaped and he ran away, right? So Ravana called Maricha and he said that I need your help to conquer Rama, 
So Maricha said, no, 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 my dear Lord, no. He would call Lord, uh, he would address Ravana as Lord because he was living in his kingdom. So he said, no, no, my dear Lord, I will never fight against uh, Lord Rama and please don't use me for that. So Ravana said, if you don't help me, I am going to kill you right now. Look at that attitude of Ravana. If you don't listen to me, I will dissolve you, right? People try to do that around us, but do not get scared for those of us who are under the shelter of Krishna. Avashya Rakshipe Krishna. Krishna will take care, right? So he said, so Maricha thought, all right, uh, tell me, what can I do? So Ravana said, you become the golden deer and you lure Mother Sita. So Maricha took the form of the golden deer and uh, he thought that it was better to be killed by Lord Rama instead of being killed by Ravana. So he accepted this service. So then he, he but he nevertheless told Ravana, uh, Ravana that Ramji is very, very powerful. He is the supreme personality of God at Ravana, don't do this. But Ravana, you know, he being Ravana, he did not listen to him, right? Now, let's let's see who else. Lankini, okay. One second, children. Yes, it's almost thundering outside. Yes, Lankini was the doorkeeper of uh, Lung, uh, of Lanka. And she was a demoness, yes. And uh, she was, she also, uh, you know, um, was did a lot of tapasya to Lord Brahma. And Lord Brahma told her, okay, no one can kill you until unless a monkey came and hit your chest with his fist. Yeah. So she was given this boon, right? So Lord Brahma, see how he's giving, uh, <laughs> you know, all the fruits of that uh, penances and tapasya to even the demons because that was what he's assigned to do by the Supreme Lord. But how we misuse our blessings, how we misuse our, you know, um, good parents, good atmosphere, good company, devotee, association, how we misuse it, children, time to ponder. So Lankini did that and when Hanuman came, she stopped him and then Hanuman said, Hanuman, uh, you know, punched her chest with his fist and she died right there. Oh, so yeah, she died right there, right? And uh, so in that uh, in reference also, she knew that yes, Hanuman was going to approach Lanka, Ravana. He was going to come and she, you know, uh, said, she told Ravana that, Please let him come inside. I will not stop him. And uh, also that, you know, you must give away Mother Sita, give away Mother Sita. But he did not listen, right? So this was Lankini, right? Now, Angad. Next was Angad, children. Angad was, yeah, Angad was the second messenger sent by Lord Rama. He said, that uh, you know uh, someone else he was also from the vanar sena and he said that uh, 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 ramji said that let's send um, angad as the second messenger after hanuman and let us see what message he gets for us so angad went in and of course he was he came with a lot across a lot of obstacles but angad was a very very powerful vana uh, vanara also and um, he went inside and uh, the, the soldiers and the doorkeepers all came running behind Angad and they said, please go out from here, get, get out of here, you know, you know, she, that's what he, he said, um, they were insulting him and he, but he managed to come in front of Ravana and then uh, Angad said, all right, I will go in a moment, but I have come to give you this message that you should not fight the Supreme Personality of God and Lord Rama and give back Mother Sita. Ravan started laughing. <laughs> we, we laugh and we sometimes cry also in our own ignorance, isn't it? So he said, I will go, but for once uh, I challenge all of you when I'm placing my uh, feet on the ground, I want you, any one of you to come and remove my foot, uproot my foot from the ground. So all the soldiers tried. Everyone tried. No one was successful. Big, big wrestlers, Ravana called, but nobody could do it, right? So he said, 
Angad said, Angad told Ravana, imagine if the messenger of Lord Rama it can do this to you and your soldiers and your entire army. How powerful would my Ram, uh, my Lord Ram be? Jai Siya Ram! He said that, right? And then he sang the glories of Mother Sita and Lord Ram. And he, he actually warned Ravana, but Ravana did not pay a heed. Children, so many, um, you know, there's so many advices, so many warnings, no? It takes a dull-headed person not to pay heed to so many warnings, isn't it, children? Right? So our parents keep telling us. And sometimes our, you know, devotee friends or, you know, our teachers, our gurus keep telling us about so many things in life. But time to ponder, children, do we pay heed? Do we pay heed to what they say? Huh? So time to ponder, right? And then it was Kumbhakaran's term, time, right? Kumbhakaran was actually a demon, but he was, uh, children, in a way, he was very pious person, right? And uh, he also did tapasya with Ravana and uh, the brother and he said that he did the he performed a lot of austerities and he said that um, he asked a boon okay and finally lord brahma appeared uh, right and um, uh, and uh, when lord brahma appeared mother saraswati and he, he wanted to say okay ask for a boon so <laughs> So Mother Saraswati, you know, the mother, who is Mother Saraswati, who gives us this potential to talk well, to sing well, to do kirtan well, that is Mother Saraswati, right? So she tied the tongue of Kumbhakaran, you know, literally tied it. So, you know, he became a cleft tongue, he became totla, you know, how you see small children blabbering, they sound very sweet. But Kumbhakaran actually, he asked, he, uh, Lord Indra said, what do you want, Lord Brahma said. So he said, I want Instead of saying Indrasana means he wanted to become the master of the demigods. He wanted to sit on the seat of Indra. Instead of saying Indrasana, he said Nindrasana. <laughs> okay. So Nindrasana means a bed to sleep, right? <laughs> so that is what was heard. Then, instead of saying Nirdevatvam, which means annihilation of the devatas, he said Nidravatvam, means conquered by sleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> he asked for Nidrasana and he asked for being conquered by sleep. So, it was said Tathastu. And then he came to his senses and he prayed to Lord Brahma, no, 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 this was a trick played with me. So, Lord Brahma said, okay. Instead of sleeping for, say, uh, the whole year or all the time, you will be sleeping only for six months. For six months, you can sleep and then wake up and do whatever nonsense you want to do, right? So, children, here Kumbhakaran tells us that when we don't follow a particular routine in our life, how it can create a havoc on our body, our mind. He would really get up so hungry and eat whatever came in front of him, right? And he was he was totally intoxicated and he would like to have, you know, all liquor and all other intoxicating drinks and he would drink. In fact, even for the battle with Lord Rama, he went in an intox intoxicated state, but he managed to kill all the soldiers of Lord Rama. He injured Hanuman and Sugriva both. Lord Rama killed him. So, uh, he actually, he also, you know, um, uh, tried to advise Lord Rama because he was pious. He knew the superpower was Rama. So, imagine his own brother, Ravana's own brother saying, don't, don't uh, uh, pick up a fight with uh, Ramji. Give back Sita. Give back Sita. But Ravana was blind with lust and desires, wrong desires. So he did not listen to Kumbhakaran also. Finally, Sita Maya. Sita Maya gave Ravana this advice. Who is Sita Maya? Sita Maya is a worshipable goddess. She's extent, she's um, um, uh, the goddess or extension of goddess of fortune. So she also said that Ravana, if you send me back. Lord Ram will forgive you, but there is no way that you can defeat my Lord Ram. So please send me back and do not pick up a fight with 
Lord Ram, uh, because that will lead to your annihilation. And um, actually, children, uh, there's a pastime related to this uh, Mother Sita in Ashokvatika. Ashokvatika is that the place in, in, in Ravana's palace, the small garden, where Sita, not a small garden, where it's, it, is, it was a huge, big garden, where Sita Maya sang, uh, sat under a tree. And she was guarded by many, many demonesses. So once Ramana, you know, being a very uh, uh, person who does cannot control his mind and senses, and he wants, if he wants anything, he just wants it at the spur of the moment. You know, we also do that. Abhi chahiye mujhe, abhi chahiye. We do trouble our parents sometimes. I want iPhone 10X and I want this and that. So many desires, right? But uh, so children, let's learn from this particular pastime, right? So Ravana, once, uh, you know, he was uh, chasing um, an Apsara. Apsara called, um, I'll just tell you the name. He was chasing an Apsara called Panji Kastvili. Yes, right? So this Apsara uh, was running and, but finally Ravana attacked her and, uh, you know, he really misbehaved with her. So this was witnessed by Lord Brahma. So Lord Brahma said, Ravana, moving forward, if you try to touch a woman against her wishes, then your head will be burnt down or your head will be cut down into thousands of pieces. So Ravana was aware of this. And that is why when he went to abduct Mother Sita, he did not you know, take her by her hand. As you see in some pictures, that is not true. He actually dug out the land uh, where Mother Sita was standing, he picked up the entire land with Mother Sita and he went in his airplane. And there also he placed her there. And even in Ashok Vatika, he never even touched Mother Sita once also. But people say, oh, look at Ravana. He is such a, he was such a noble person. He's such a decent person. He, he uh, okay, agreed. He took Mother Sita, but he did not touch her. That was not because of his wisdom, not because of his humility, not because of his intelligence, but it was because of the fear of that, uh, of dying, because of the fear of that curse by Lord Brahma, right? So uh, have your basics really clear, children, because Ravana is a demon, right? So, and in, in some other pastime, you know, Ravana also chased a beautiful lady called Vedvati. Now, this lady was sitting and she was doing her uh, sadhana. She was, she was doing her tapasya and she was offering her oblations in that yuga to Lord Vishnu and, uh, you know, Lord Narayana and uh, uh, Ra uh, Hanuman, uh, sorry, Ravana. He dressed up, nice makeup he did and he went there in front of her and he started saying uh, that, uh, marry me. So, he, she said, no. I don't want to marry anyone. I want to concentrate on my sadhana uh, and uh, I have my Lord Vishnu for my protection. So Ravana picked her by her hair. So, but she had all the, you know, some, um, Vedic powers. So she cut her hair with all the Vedic powers and uh, also uh, again, cursed Ravana that you will never be able to acquire the uh, love of any woman whom you try to uh, forcefully acquire okay so this is the curse he got see 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 children when we do a wrong behavior all curses come our way people do a curse in a very subtle way when some children you know uh, you should be very, very careful of your behavior with others, children. That is what I have learned personally. You know, we, we, we may convey a message, but very, very politely. We cannot take anyone for granted for that matter, right? So we, what we speak, you know, it's like an arrow. It will either harm someone or heal someone. So be very careful. So this Vedvati is the one who appeared as Chaya Sita, means the shadow of Mother Sita, who actually Ravana, abducted. In Ramayana, it is said, children, that Mother Sita actually never left Ayodhya. Hmm? Only the Chaya Sita or the shadow of Mother Sita was abducted by Ra uh, Ravana. So, this is the pastime of Ravana's character, right? So, and hence, he did not listen to Mother Sita also, right? He was advised time and again, but he did not listen to any of them. His pride and his desires 
were more powerful than his wisdom, right? Which of course brought his downfall, isn't it children? Hmm? In our lives, we have always two choices. One is the easy and the shortcut. Oh, chalo, karte hai. You know, let's do it. We have that feeling. Oh, chalo, let's do it. We go in a group of children and friends and uh, we feel that, okay, let's, let's eat this. Okay, let's do this. But at that time, contemplate, use your critical thinking, be the master of your, you know, thought process and see what is right, what is wrong. And especially when you are all fortunate souls, children, you all are attending these classes and I'm so, so fortunate to, you know, have all of you listening to these beautiful pastimes because this, this is paving up great, great, bright future for all of you children. I see you as wonderful individuals living a very, very happy life, yes? Pro problems will come. Problems always come in everybody's life, whether devotee, non-devotee. But how we tackle it, you all are gaining this experience right now. So all your is to you, children. So this let us let this be an example for all of us to learn. Despite so many advices from all the learned scholars, from all his chief ministers, from Mother Sita also, he never paid heed. And he was driven by his wrong desires, which led to his downfall. So what is the, uh, tell me, so what, these are some of the reasons, right? False ego, arrogance. We don't want to listen to anyone. I know what I'm doing. Illusion. Oh, whatever I do is right. Pride. Oh, I'm at this position. I'm the monitor of the class. I'm the head girl of the school. Oh, I scored 98 percentage in my board exams and I know everything. You, what, what do you know? Tell me the formula of potassium carbonate. Okay, tell me the formula. <laughs> we go on and on, right, children? So time to be humble, 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 right? Krishna likes humble children and humble people, okay? Sinful behavior. So when the other person does not listen to us, we try, try to harm that person and we commit sin, right? And all that starts with the false ego, right? What is the true ego? The true ego is that we are the servants of Krishna, right? And what is the false ego? That I am my master. Mehi sapkuchu, right? So what is the solution, children, to all of this? Let us see. Hmm? The solution is, number one, devotee association. If you have a friend who is devotee in your life, Sit with him or her and read some good books by Srila Prabhupada. Listen to discourses like these, right? Chanting. Chanting creates a shield around you, children, with which you will kind of, you know, not, um, you know, uh, it, you may be attacked by, you know, Maya, right? Which is wrong behavior of people, but chanting will protect you. Hearing, hearing of what? Not moving not on the YouTube videos, but hearing about Krishna's pastimes because it purifies our heart of lust, anger, greed, envy, jealousy, and follow a routine, children. Don't think that you are sitting at home, you're free to wake up anytime, you're free to eat anytime, help your parents, right? Be good children and follow a routine and everything else will fall in place, right? So with this, in my session and let's chant Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman Ki Jai thank you very much children for being so patient and listening to me I will now open uh, the chat box for any questions hmm? any questions children from today's session yeah let us try to analyze what you want to ask me or what you have actually understood from this entire session. I want to know first your realizations, children. What have you understood? Tell me. Oh, who is Malivan? Malivan was the chief uh, minister. He was the, whenever a king is, you know, king wants advice, Malyavan, uh, you know, he goes back to his ministers and he uh, asks for advice because these ministers are well-versed, they know all the scriptures and Vedas and whatever is right in that situation, they give that advice. But Malyavan was the chief advisor of the royal king, Ravana. 
of Lanka. Okay. Anything related to this particular uh, pastime? Hmm? This. Uh, Anybody wants to ask or anybody wants to know, uh, wants to share what point they liked and what would they like to follow in their life? Uh, Hare Krishna Mataji, uh, someone is asking who is the father and mother of Hanuman? The question uh, is from Om Shiv. Now, Om and Shiv, uh, Anjani. Anjani is the uh, mother. An we sing this uh, Hanuman, uh, this thing, no? Anjani putra pavan sut nama and pavan sut. Pavan sut means, pavan means uh, uh, Vayudev. Ro lo lo Hanuman is the son of Vayudev and Anjani. Anjani putra pavan sut nama, right? Mahavir Vikram Bajrangi Kumati Nevar Sumati Ke Sangi. So Anjani, mother Anjani and, and uh, Vayudev. Hmm? Okay. Uh, Unnati is asking. Okay. Deepika is also asking. Okay. Deepika is asking. Um, Mataji, despite Ravana was advised as by many people went in the wrong way due to false ego and arrogance. Yes. Very well understood, Deepika. Be despite he, uh, you know, advices by so many intelligent people, not by Buddhus. By so many intelligent people, he was advised, but still he did not pay heed then. Downfall hoga, no? Right, Pita? Okay. And Unnati. Unnati is saying, you said we should call a woman, other woman other than one's wife as Mataji. Why shouldn't a husband call his wife as Mataji? Ah, <laughs> nice question. Because, <laughs> because that's his wife. It is written in the scriptures, children, that you should call all the other women except your wife as Mataji. Right? I see somebody doing this also. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is a sweet question. So, because a, a Mataji, because a wife always serves the husband. Right, children? And uh, a husband can demand a glass of water from his wife. Right? Uh, they, uh, so and so, please give me water and the wife will happily serve. Right, so Mataji means we give a little higher standard, right? So <laughs> that is the reason, children. Okay, Mataji, any other questions you see? Uh, yes, Mataji, Mahi uh, uh, is asking a question. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just read out. Yes, okay. Mataji, even though Ravana was a pure soul, then why? Sorry, then how could he commit these sins? Ah, wonderful question. Okay, let me pick up the Bhagavad Gita for this. Arjuna also asked, you know, uh, you know, uh, Arjuna was a pure soul, right? And he asked uh, Krishna that Krishna, uh, uh, not no, not wanting also, sometimes why do I want to commit sins? Why do, what is it? that drives me to commit sin sometimes when even I don't want to commit that particular act, right? So Krishna says, I'm quoting this month, uh, shloka. I'll tell you the number one second, children. Just give me a moment. Mm -hmm. It says, Kama Esha Krodha Esha 5.26 more. No, it is two point. Can someone help me with the shloka? It comes in the second chapter. Okay, okay. I think it is 5.26. Let me just... So, it was Ravana's... Uh, what was it? Kama Kro... Uh, it's, no. no. No, not this one. Sorry. So, it's uh, Krishna says, Kama Esha Krodha Esha. Right? So, that means that... Um, uh, it is the it is the lust and our wrong desires that lead us to do wrong things, right? So that is the thing. And as far as Ravana is concerned, he yes, he was a pure devotee. Children, he uh, he he was a pure devotee, but in this life, he was assigned the life of a demon, right? So befitting his role, he was behaving in that particular way because Krishna is equal to all. He gives demons as well as the uh, uh, demigods or devatas and demons equal rights to learn music, to learn, uh, to acquire education, to learn the scriptures, 
right? Even scriptures, even Ravana read the scriptures. But because of his mindset, because of his demonic mentality of his, you know, acquiring what is not his or acquiring things of other people, like Mother Sita was the wife of Rama, right? That is why he, his downfall was very, very uh, evident. And that is the reason, children. Because in this life, he was assigned the work of a demon. He was actually doing the Leela, uh, participating in the Leela of Krishna. Okay. Mataji, another question by Saket. Hmm. Is Lord Vishnu the supreme God because Lord Rama and Krishna are his forms? Ah. <laughs> no, children. That is a big, big misnomer. Right? Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. And you will be surprised. There's only not one Lord Vishnu. There are three Lord Vishnu, right? Which is Karuna Dakshai Vishnu, Garbo Dakshai Vishnu and Shiro Dakshai Vishnu. So from Krishna come the first four expansions, which is Aniruddha Pradyumna, Sankarshan and uh, um, uh, Vasudev. And then from that Sankarshan, another four expansion comes of the same Anirudh Pradhanuva, Sankarshan and Vasudev. And that from, from the second expansion of Sankarshana, all these Purusha avtaras, all these three types of Vishnus appear. Where do you see Krishna? Krishna is there. After his four expansions of Anirudh Pradyumna, uh, Sankarshan and uh, Vasudev, then again from the Sankarshana, again Chaturvyoha, another four expansions can form that Sankarshana, another those Vishnus come. So Krishna is not Avatar. Krishna is Avatari. He is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Vishnu is not the original Vita, Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Krishna is the Supreme. And all others are the incarnations, emanations, portions and the portions of the plenary portions of Krishna. Right? Uh, Mataji, another question by Aditya Ramesh. Yeah, we can take uh, after one. Lankini's yeah. chest, yeah, after Lankini's chest was hit by Hanuman, she died. But after <laughs> dying, how could she advise Ravana? <laughs> no, she knew about Ravana. <laughs> yes, so she knew about Ravana, uh, Hanuman. She knew about Hanuman because she was blessed by uh, because she was blessed with this boon that she nobody can kill her by Brahmaji. And she knew that Hanuman is going to come. She knew because demons also possess some mystic power. She came, she came to know. And then she saw her. She, she went inside and she told her that this is not an ordinary uh, monkey. This is Hanuman, the eternal servitor of Lord Rama. And he has come. Please let me stop him. Otherwise, he will kill me and kill you also. He can destroy everything, right? No, he, she didn't say he, you can, he can kill you because he's the king. Nobody can talk to the king like that. But um, uh, she went and warned Ravana. But he did not take it. Got it? Nice question. <laughs> All of you are so, so talented, children. You are asking such sweet questions. Okay. Mother, um, another question by Unnati. I yes. have another doubt. It is said that Ravan kidnapped Mother Sita because his sister told him to do so. Is it true? <laughs> sister was Shupanka, right? She was also burning in that, uh, you know, fire of envy and fire of anger. Children, what happens when we are angry at someone? What happens? Tell me. Tell me. Type in the chat box. What happens when you are angry at somebody? When you don't like how the other person has behaved with you? Quickly write. What, what do you do? What do you end up doing? I want to see your answers. <laughs> okay. What is this, Mataji? What, what, what is it, Mataji? They are saying anything? Uh, okay. Yes, they, they become our enemy. We try to get revenge on the person. Absolutely. Uh, we try to get revenge. How do we try to get? Yes. We get bewildered. Very good, Aditya. We get bewildered. Yes. Very true. Yeah. Our intelligence goes for a toss. Katam buddhi nasha. For Ravana, it was Vinashakale Viparita Buddhi. Right? So, in his end, when, when it, his destruction was evident, his Buddhi also went haywire. Right? So, what was the question, original question? Sorry. Uh, huh, his sister. So, his sister actually joined hands with Ravana, who was that Shupanka, because Shupanka wanted to marry 
Ramji. And Ramji said that, no, I'm, uh, I already have a wife. And in this birth, uh, you know, I am just uh, devoted to one wife. I cannot marry many wives. So he said, you can ask my sister, uh, brother Lakshmana. But Lakshmana, uh, you know, uh, start, but Lakshmana cut Shrupanka's nose. Why? Because she started blaspheming Mother Sita. So she was also burning in the anger of revenge. And then, <laughs> then what happened that uh, she said, yes. She said, Ravana, Ravana always wanted to abduct Mother Sita because he had lost that. He had no, he was, uh, Ramji had defeated during Swayamvar, Sita Swayamvar. So then he said that, uh, she said that, yes, Ravana, my dear brother, Ravana, you must go. She encouraged him. Yeah, so that is true. That is true. Right. Okay. So other questions, you can always write to us, children. You can um, uh, write to us. In, uh, in, uh, at Mataji, shall we give our emails to them? We can give our email. Uh, yes, we'll, yeah. Mataji, just write in the... Do we have the ISKCON's email ID? Yeah. If you yes, have... Yes, Mataji, it, right field ISKCON, right? Yeah, if you can. Yes. Please type in, children. Put in your messages and your uh, realizations from this. How did you like the class? And also about the questions uh, in, in on this email ID that Mataji will just uh, uh, float and then we will answer it. But today we, it's, we are, you know, crunched on time. So we will stop here. Thank you very much. We'll meet again. Yes, uh, we'll meet again, Saket. We'll meet again next time and we will answer your questions. So Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hari, Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, 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 Hari. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hari Krishna.